background. Let's debate what's going on now. Two former assistant secretaries of defense are joining us. Uh, Lawrence Korb uh, with the Center for American Progress. Uh, he's the taller one. And Frank Gaffney of the Center for Security Policy. Uh, Frank Gaffney, first to you. Uh, she said anybody who comes to the campus, like other law school deans, whatever organization you represent, you can't have a discriminatory policy on religion or ethnic background or, uh, or uh, sexual gender or whatever. Uh, and so she was just upholding that principle and preventing the Pentagon from recruiting on campus. Well, it's important to understand that we have so little to go on that what we have to do is focus really intensively on the few bits of information or insight into her feelings, her thinkings, her policies, her judgment. And what I think she said beyond that I just need to conform to this policy is that this is a moral offense of the first order. I mean, that kind of there with Holocaust. And she then, I think, when she was overturned, overwhelmingly, even by the justice she's going to be replacing, by the way, on the amicus brief that she filed in this case, it turned out, it turned out that she wasn't going to quit her job over it. She wasn't going to actually do more than posture on this. So we don't have much to go on. It's kind of like Barack Obama's uh, law school record. Uh, we don't have much to go on there, too. I we need to, to get to the bottom she of this. She never made any uh, comparisons with the Holocaust. Well, she that's didn't, what, that's but what she, saying she described this she as, said it was a, a moral as, a, imperative. as a moral objectionable a front of the first order. She did lose. The argument she made was unanimously rejected, uh, Lawrence, by the Supreme Court. Well, well first of all, you got to remember that she allowed them on the campus until the Third Circuit Court of Appeals said that the Solomon Amendment was wrong. But And then they were allowed on campus. They weren't allowed to use the career service. They were never, never at her time uh, prevented from going to the law school or being on campus. I think that's the first thing to keep in mind. The th using the facility. They, could, they were, no, but they were allowed under they, the Solomon Okay, Amendment. for six months, only six months, while the third, she didn't do the Third Circuit Court of Appeal, but she joined with other law school deans in supporting the Well, the argument was that the, the U.S. military did not have the same rights and privileges of recruiting on campus that law firms would have or Goldman Sachs would have they, or other okay. private organizations. Okay, for six months. That's only, the only time. Six months out of her six years. The other thing to keep in mind, if you read her statement, it sounds just like Admiral Mullen. General Kagan and Admiral Mullen, I'll put their two statements up there. And, you know, it's amazing to me. I was in the military in the 60s about the same time as Mullen. We had gay people. And I think when Admiral Mullen came out and said, we've been doing this, he basically said it's morally wrong for us to be doing this. So to say she is somehow different from our military leaders and unpatriotic, you'd have to say Admiral Mullen's on the Joint yeah. Chiefs of Staff. And he finds it morally wrong right now that gays cannot serve openly in the U.S. military as they can in almost all the NATO uh, allied armies. He, he's the one member of the Joint Chiefs of Staff who has taken that position. The rest of them have not. And I think what's important here is he doesn't have a lifetime appointment to act in a way that it suggests she feels she should, which is to say to disregard the law. Admiral Mullen understands it is the law of the land today that prescribes, that prohibits avowed homosexuals from serving in the United States military unless and until that law is changed by court fiat, perhaps, or by repeal, that's the law, and you can bet that Admiral Mullen is going to support that it law. It was the law that Bill Clinton pushed through he with a compromise it. with Clinton General Colin Powell. It. 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 it was pushed on him. He supported it. Be no. Because the overwhelming body no, 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 of evidence no, 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 of, of, Frank, the, Frank, of okay. the Congress okay. was okay. for the Basically, law. Clinton wanted to drop the ban completely. Uh, the Congress, as a compromise, said, as long as you don't openly say that. But you know the interesting thing no, no, while was the Defense as long as you don't, said that, Larry. Uh, but That's the interesting right. thing is while we were discharging thousands of gay people, okay, at this time, including Arabic speakers, the military was recruiting felons. They couldn't make their 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 goals. It made no sense. If anything, if we had listened to her, we'd be in much better shape. And if we had listened to it becomes a, it becomes a bigger argument over uh, gays serving openly in the United States military. And Robert Gates, the Secretary of Defense, says within the next several months there will be a decision. He wants that long-standing policy reversed. We'll continue okay. our discussion, Congress guys. That, well, it's going to be up to Congress in the end, uh, as you point out. We'll see what Congress does. Thanks very much. Thank you, Will.